future of the U.S. Air Force's secretive mayhem program is uncertain amid a funding issue that could at least lead to a major delay. Mayhem's stated focus has been on demonstrating an air-launched hypersonic air vehicle capable of performing strike and intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance missions, but the apparent demand for this capability within the service at all is now unclear. There could still be interest going forward in certain components of the project, including research and development work on advanced high-speed jet engines. The Air Force Research Laboratory AFRL, awarded a contract with a $334 million ceiling for work on Mayhem, including delivering a larger class air-breathing hypersonic system to Lados back in 2022. At that time, the company announced that CalSpan, the Draper Laboratory, and Kratos Defense and Security Solutions were also part of its team to design the Mayhem Air Vehicle, which it said would be powered by a scramjet engine. The first details about this project emerged publicly in 2020. The Mayhem program will complete the first task order this year on the current contract at the conclusion of the Conceptual Design Review, System Requirements Review, CODR SRR. AFRL spokesman Brian Ripple told the War Zone earlier this week. AFRL is neither terminating the initial task order nor the indefinite delivery, indefinite quantity, IDIQ, contract, Air Force Colonel Aaron Tucker, the High Speed Systems Division Chief at AFRL's Aerospace Systems Directorate, stressed to us in response to follow-up questions. The initial task order will be fulfilled with a conceptual design review. Ripple and Tucker's comments came in response to questions we raised this week during the Air and Space Forces Association's Warfare Symposium in Aurora, Colorado about the future of mayhem, as well as Lockheed Martin's State Route 72 program. However, the Mayhem program did not receive funding in fiscal year 2024 to proceed beyond the scope of Task Order 1, CODR SRR. Tucker added, this funding decision results in a year-for-year -year slip in the development of a digital design and enabling technologies for an air-launched hypersonic ISR, intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance, and strike capability until funds are restored. What potential hurdles there might be to securing that funding now, and if there is even any intention to try to do so, are unclear. In addition, although AFRL is not terminating the existing contract with Lados, the operational pull is not clear enough to warrant significant investment to launch and deliver a more complete design package suitable for an acquisition program, according to AFRL spokesman Ripple. That being said, AFRL may seek to add additional task orders to the LATOS contract in the future. Right now, the plan is to use the conceptual vehicle design LATOS has developed to identify technical risks for expendable hypersonic vehicles, Afrels Tucker explained. This design will be used to establish a technology maturation task order under the expendable hypersonic multi-mission platform IDIQ awarded to LATOS, Inc to support expendable hypersonic technology development. Despite the apparent lack of clarity on the operational pull for a hypersonic air vehicle for strike and reconnaissance missions, the expectation is still that the designs and technologies advanced through this program provide a stepping stone to the future of hypersonic capabilities, to include next-generation standoff weapons and reusable hypersonic aircraft, according to Tucker. Separately, Air Force Global Strike Command is conducting an analysis of alternatives, or AOA, over the next year to refine the requirement for high-speed strike in the Office of the Secretary of Defense, or OSD, as continuing to refine leap-ahead capability for reusable applications, Ripple, the AFRL spokesman, said. What we are more interested in right now, in terms of a feasibility perspective, is a high Mach turbine engine, a U.S. Air Force official told the war zone when asked about AFGSC's interest in mayhem. Still, a reusable uncrewed air-launched hypersonic strike and reconnaissance aircraft could certainly offer benefits in various operational scenarios. Such a system could be ideal for prosecuting time-sensitive targets, or just gathering intelligence on them, including deep in denied areas at extreme standoff ranges. From an ISR perspective, spy satellites, which might be the only other option for collecting on the targets in question, could take too long to retask and are predictable, with the enemy knowing when they will pass overhead. An air-launched reusable platform could offer additional flexibility in terms of vector of approach and timely arrival over a target area compared to regional ground and surface launch concepts.